Now, also, if you are new to me, um, then you need to know that when I talk about astrology, I talk about astrology from the true sidereal point of view, not Vedic and not tropical or um, East, uh, uh, Western astrology. This is not from a tropical or mainstream point of view. This is from a true sidereal point of view that I'm bringing this information forward, okay? Hello everyone, welcome to, I guess you can say this is morning coffee, uh, but not really. We're going to be doing something very different today. Um, so welcome, happy Monday. I hope you guys are doing well. Thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, if you're new to me, if you're new to my channel, if you've, new, if you've clicked onto this video specifically because we're going to be talking about Mercury in retrograde, then welcome. My name is Eric. It is so very nice to meet you. So as I said about 30 seconds ago, this technically could be seen as morning coffee. It is first thing in the morning. I've got my coffee with me. But we're not going to be talking about general energy. We're not going to be doing a general energy reading in the typical sense that I normally do morning coffee. And if you are new to me and you're not aware, uh, morning coffee has been, for the last two years, I want to say, has been my daily general energy reading in which we just talk about what ener whatever energies come up for the collective and whatever spirit wants to discuss with you in terms of what's going on in your life. Obviously, these are general readings, so please take what resonates and leave what doesn't. And also, they have been timeless just because we were just talking about general energies. But today, we're going to be doing something a little bit different. Um, so for those of you that have been following me, you know that I'm making a shift into more of an astrology base as a reader and as an energy worker. Um, and I recently was, uh, took the dive, took the leap, and invested in the software that I've been eyeing for months now to really accelerate and start to get it, well, start to get into my astro astrological practice and really kind of accelerate that avenue for myself down in my life. Um, and so when I woke up this morning, I felt inspired to not just talk about the general energies, but actually to talk about Mercury and retrograde. So this is not going to be as timeless of a reading as some other readings have been in terms of morning coffee. Um, obviously, it's still a timeless reading because even though we're, we're talking about the energies and we're talking about how the planets are shifting in the sky through a certain time period, um, energies are fluid, okay? So just because we're going through this certain time period in our conscious um, perception, that doesn't mean that you know, there is an expiration date or certain things have to happen within a certain time period. We're still going to be, you know, depending on where you are in your journey and in your life and your life path and all that, we're still going to potentially be feeling the effects or going through the changes that this retrograde uh, potentially has the opportunity to bring to us or influence, influence us to make. Okay. I hope that made sense. So, um... Like I said, this is going to be a little bit different. Now, also, if you are new to me, um, then you need to know that when I talk about astrology, I talk about astrology from the true sidereal point of view, not Vedic and not tropical or um, East, uh, uh, Western astrology. Tropical astrology, which is also actually uh, known as mainstream astrology, is what, you know, the average astrologer will work with. Um, me personally, I find more value and more understanding in working with the true sidereal system. So a little dis a little information about that. What is the true sidereal system? The true sidereal system takes into account where the constellations actually are in our sky. Tropical astrology or mainstream astrology was put into place back in Babylonian days. And when that system was put into place, it actually did coincide with where the constellations were in the visible sky uh, at that time period in human history. But like anything in our universe, our sky is not static, it is dynamic. So as time has gone on, since that system was put into place, uh, the constellations have shifted to different positions in the sky. So typically when you're comparing a tropical or a mainstream astrological chart 
to that of the true sidereal chart, even the regular, even, even sidereal as a whole, because there is a little bit of a difference between sidereal astrology and true sidereal astrology. I'll get into that in a second. But when you compare the, con the, the position of the constellations in our sky at this current time compared to when, where they were back in Babylonian days when tropical or what is now considered mainstream astrology was put into place, the constellations have shifted, and they've shifted backwards about, we'll say, 22, anywhere between 21 and 23 degrees to be safe. I'm not exactly sure on that. Somewhere between 21 and 23 degrees, we'll say. Those constellations have shifted backwards. So if you were to compare your, your mainstream or tropical astrology chart to your sidereal chart, we'll take me, for example. Uh, in tropical astrology, I was born on May 6th, 1987, and at that time, in terms of tropical astrology, the sun was in Taurus. But actually, when you look at where the actual placement of the stars are, in, or the constellations are in our sky, the sun was actually in Aries when I was born. Okay, so there's that backwards shift, all right? So uh, if you're new to this, I highly recommend that you check out um, you, you, you look up your chart. I have to double check on what links I can put in the description box. I've tr I think I've tried to put this link in the description box below before and it didn't quite work. But I recommend that you go to masteringthezodiac.com and use their chart calculator there. That will be able to give you your true sidereal chart. Okay, again, I'm going to try and put it in the description box. If it works, it works. If it doesn't, I'll try and figure something out eventually. But... So, um, there was something else that I wanted to say, but I forgot, but ask any questions that you have, put them in the description box. I'll do my best to try and answer those questions to the best of my ability. Now, so, um, so, so, you know, if you're new to me now, you know, this is not from a tropical or mainstream point of view. This is from a true sidereal point of view that I'm bringing this information forward. Okay. So what we're going to be doing here is I'm going to talk through um, the notes that I've written down in terms of the of our retrograde here, our Mercury retrograde, and I am going to be pulling cards as I talk through it um, just to get, you know, a sense of some extra guidance in terms of things to look out for. So we're going to be looking at this from just a general energy point of view, and then I also kind of want to get some love messages related to this retrograde for us. Yes? All right, guys, um, I believe that's it. So why don't we get started here and see what's going on for this retrograde? Here we go. Hi, spirit. Please make me a clear channel for the collective at this time. Please bring forward the best messages to serve their highest good and the highest good of all involved. Please give us clear and accurate representation of the energies of this current Mercury in retrograde from, when is it? May 28th through June 23rd of 2021. Thank you so very much, Spirit. All right, guys, this is probably going to be a little bit of a long video. Um, so for those of you that want to timestamp certain things, please go ahead and do so. I'm going to try my best to remember to do it. But as many of you know that you've been following me for a while, you know that that doesn't always happen. So anyway, if I fail to get some good timestamps in there, and if you guys would like to put them in yourself, please go ahead and do so. We're going to be First, we're, first of all, we're going to go, be going through the notes that I've written down, and then we're really going to get into, and I'm going to try and pull some cards as I do that, and then we're going to get into the card section where I'm going to really start to pull cards for this. And when we get into the cards, we're going to look at the general energy, and then we're going to look at love messages for this, uh, for this time period, okay? Also, full disclosure, especially if you're new to me, um, I am channeling, I'm doing some hardcore channeling for this situation, so my sinuses are like, woo! So I might have to pause and like handle my nose. Okay, so let's get started here. Um, the so so 
let's just get into this. I'm the, the this Mercury has uh, stationed uh, retrograde very late in the day, uh, May twenty eighth of twenty twenty one. Today is the thirty first of May. That is the day that I'm actually recording this reading or this this video. Okay, so. Uh, and I'm uh, so we have this Mercury, this retrograde of Mercury going from the 28th of May to the 23rd of June. And the funny thing about this, you guys, is that right after the day after Mercury stations retrograde, which is June 23rd, the day after that, June 24th, we have our next full moon. Oh, yeah. And this uh, retrograde. So it started late the night of May 28th. And it's going to be stationed direct by about 10.40 a.m. on the 23rd of June. This is Eastern Standard Time that I'm using right here. Um, and, in, uh, and, and by the time it stations direct, it's going to be opposing the moon, which is actually a pretty good thing. Uh, uh, and it stations, it, and this, this, this transit of Mercury being in retrograde is happening in Taurus. It's also starting in the eighth house, uh, which we'll see is going to be very significant as we move forward. But it's starting in the eighth house and transiting back with Taurus back into the seventh house. By the time it stations direct, Taurus and Mercury will be back in the seventh house. Okay. Now, the fact that this is the eighth house that this is starting in is so incredibly perfect. Why? Because the eighth house is ruled by Scorpio. The eighth house is all about the occult. It's about uncovering deep, dark secrets. It's about other people's money. It's about all. It's about um, that which is taboo, that which is hidden, that which is secretive. Also, that could that which could be fairly dark or fairly toxic. Okay, in your life. Now, who is Mercury? Mercury is the planet of communication, of thought, of science, okay? Mercury uh, is the ruler of Gemini. Um, and so with Mercury, with this retrograde, I'm calling Mercury in retrograde the remodeling of self. And this is directly connected to what happened with this last full moon in Scorpio, in which that I titled the eclipse of self because that was a full moon eclipse in Scorpio. If you haven't had a chance to watch that video yet, there is the link up here in your, in on the top left of your screen, <laughs> screen, on the top left of your screen. Also, if that doesn't work for you, I have put a link in the description box below. Definitely check that out because that full moon coupled with this Mercury in retrograde, which is within the time span, taking us to the next full moon, all three of these aspects, in my opinion, are very connected. And this is a pivotal, a perfect time for us to really get down to the, dip, the deepest depths of ourselves and really start to uncover some things that have been hidden that need to change or reassess some situations or circumstances in your life, especially with this Mercury, with this retrograde, this Mercury retrograde happening in Taurus, okay? Some physical aspects of your life, whether this is your career, your physical life, your family life, your home life, um, anything that anything that has to do with the physicality of your life right now is able to be remodeled. And Mercury moving in retrograde is a perfect time period to do that coupled with a bunch of the other things that are going on here. Now, any sort of retrograde is not bad. It actually has the potential to be really good, but a lot of people freak out when we hear of Mercury and retrograde because there often tend to be situations in which you have miscommunications happening, um, people say not to sign any contracts during this time, that type of situation. But what's really going on here is the energies of any planet that go into retrograde have the opportunity or have the propensity towards going on autopilot. So with Mercury being in retrograde specifically, that tends to be, well, you're not, you're, you tend to get careless with your, or you can get careless with your communication, or there can be carelessness with communication. There can be carelessness when um, uh, uh, doing, like doing research or, or studying something, or uh, that's why people say not to sign contracts because things can go 
um, unnoticed. And now all of a sudden when you wake up from or when you come out of this retrograde and now that you've signed the contract, you now find that, wait, there are some things that I missed or this is not what I thought I signed up for, this, that, and the third. I'm not going to say not to make any sort of decisions like that during Mercury in retrograde. I will say that with the fact that, you know, the energies of Mercury could be on, in a sense of autopilot right now, you just want to be extra careful, okay? You want to be extra conscious about the communications that you have with people and any sort of agreements you may get into at this time, all right? You just want to be extra careful because some things can slip under the radar and you find yourself in a worse position or maybe just an undesirable, undesirable position or maybe just the, a, a position you did not want to be in or you did not intend to be in. Okay, that's great. Anyway, um, so all of this, it, all of this between the last full moon that we had in Scorpio, this Mercury retrograde, and then the next full moon that we're going to have, which is going to be in Ophiuchus, by the way, all of this is connected. Why? Well, let's talk about this. Uh, like I said, uh, this, this, this Mercury retrograde co co coincides with the last full moon we had in Scorpio. And that full moon I called the eclipse of the self because you had the opportunity to really uncover some deeper aspects of yourself that need change or maybe just we'll say for, we'll just say maybe need healing. Okay. Um, and also this is coinciding with Saturn being in retrograde through its home sign of Sagittarius. No, I'm sorry, not Sagittarius, Capricorn. And with Saturn being in retrograde here, Big Papa Saturn is, and this is like I described in that full moon reading in Scorpio, definitely check that out if you haven't had a chance to. But this Big Papa Saturn is coming through in this time period and asking us, or influencing us through some sort of course direction. And it's, and it's kind of asking us the rhetorical question of, is this the same, is this the path that you want to continue moving down? Is this same path, the path that you've been on so far, the same path you want to be moving, moving forward in as we move, go down the, as we move forward in the future, okay? So I'm calling that a bit of the ability to go through some course correction in your life, right? Okay. So as we move forward with Mercury in retrograde in Taurus, right? Mercury is retrograding in Taurus from the 8th house to the 7th house. Uh, we have an opportunity or maybe even aids us in breaking free from old patterns, habits, and maybe even belief systems about ourselves. Now check it out. Mercury in Taurus can represent an energy of stubborn and rigid thinking, okay? Uh, if you have... Mercury and Taurus in your natal chart will say, you may, it, you may be hard pressed to change your opinions about a certain situation. Now, uh, this is because Taurus is a fixed sign. Taurus is also an earth sign, but Taurus is the fixed sign of the earth, of the earth element. So any sign that is fixed is not really trying to change anything. There is a course that has been set or there is a habit that has been set or there is a precedence that has been set and the fixed sign has every intention of continuing down that same course, okay? But again, here's where this course correction comes in because Mercury is in retrograde through Saturn. So you have the opportunity. Now, also, I'm sorry, the other thing that I want to say about a retrograde is not only is that energy kind of being in turn or uh, kind of going maybe potentially on autopilot, but any sort of retrograde is going to take those energies of that planet and make it more of an internal situation. Okay, so we have a ton of things in retrograde right now. We've got Mercury, we've got Saturn, we've got Pluto, we've got more. Is Jupiter in retrograde? I don't remember. It doesn't matter. But we have all of those. So far, we have all of that in retrograde. So already, this time period for us is a very internalized type of energy. We really have the ability to go deep down within ourselves and figure some shit out, right? Do some sort of course correction. Okay, excellent. Uh, now, with Mercury being retrograde through Taurus, Taurus being the sign of nurturance, of your values, 
of growing and exp uh, uh, taking the time to really allow something to grow. You start in Aries where you are, this is the sign of the self. The, uh, Aries is the ruler of the first house. The first house is arguably the most important house of your chart because that is like the house of personal opinion, right? This is where your identity stands, okay? And also the, air, the energy of Aries is very, number one, it's a cardinal energy, okay? So it's a trailblazer, it's a doer, it's a go-getter, it's a creator. Aries is that air energy in which you have all these different new ideas and processes and things that you wanna expand expand on and try and go with and, and 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 accomplish and do when you move from aries into taurus that's where you have the ability to take these seeds of inspiration developed in your developed through aries and now you take these seeds and you plant them into the ground and you provide them with the love the care and the nurturance so that they can continue to grow and sprout and become the plant that ultimately they will become as you continue to move through the zodiac right so with Mercury being in retrograde in Taurus, this literally can be seen as a time where you are tilling the soil, okay? Or you are actually having the ability to dig some things up that have been growing in your garden that you don't necessarily want growing any longer. Um, maybe as time has gone on, what once was a plant that you wanted to grow is now really actually just becoming a weed in your garden. All, plant, all weeds are actual plants, but the definition of a weed is something in your garden that is a nuisance or you don't want there or it's just taking up all kinds of space, right? Okay, so if it, it seems that in, in our lives there could be some things that have that were once providing us value, maybe even bearing fruit for us, but that don't that no longer resonate any longer. But because of, you know, habit or whatever these things now that have that were once fruitful for you are no longer resonating for you and now they're becoming weeds or now they're just taking up space in your garden for something new that can be planted and nurtured into life so with mercury being in retrograde this is a time period for you to really look at and think about what it is you're growing in your garden and change that if you like okay you can and, and, and a, a retrograde can also be seen as the planet moving backward and effectively breaking through everything that was developed right before that so that it either can be remodeled, reassessed, or changed altogether, right? Excellent. Moving forward, you really have a chance to uproot some things and do some serious weeding with this retrograde, okay? Now, like I said, the, this transit of Mercury in retrograde is happening from the 8th house into the 7th house. And this is another energy that is very, very extremely supportive of this energy or this time period of uncovering. Why? Because 8th house is the, is the house of the occult, is the house of secrets, is the house of the deep, deep depths. It's ruled, the 8th house is ruled by Scorpio. Okay, um, shoot, it's escaping me what the ruler of Scorpio is. Isn't the ruler of Scorpio Saturn? Or is it Neptune? Um, I'm escaping me on that. Oh, that's escaping me. I, sorry, I've, I've, <laughs> I dropped the ball on that one. But that's okay. We're still, we're, we're getting there, all right? But with this happening, eighth house is the house of the deep depths, is the house of, of secrets and the occult and uncovering things. So this is a perfect time for you to really use your powers of the powers of the mind, the powers of critical thinking, the powers of maybe even the scientific process, if you want to say, with Mercury, to really dig down, to really, to really uproot, to really till the soil of your life, to uncover to uproot what needs to come up in your life, right? So this is this transit is going from the eighth house to the seventh house, which is the house of interpersonal relationships, balance, and justice. The seventh house is ruled by Libra. Yes. Um, so justice and balance. Okay. So when it stations direct on the 23rd of June, you will be, uh, or Mercury will be still in Taurus, but in the house of 
the seventh house, the house ruled by Libra. And so now everything that has come up for you here, everything that you've uncovered or you've dug up now has the opportunity to be leveled out to be balanced, to even be healed, to bring a sense of balance and level and security to that energy, okay? Or to that part of that area of your life, yeah? Okay, so moving forward, this Mercury, this, this period of Mercury being in retrograde started with or starts with a semi-sextile with Pluto, who is also in retrograde. Oh, shoot, where is Pluto right now? Hold on a second. Pause. Where is... Oops. Wrong one. Give me just a second, guys. Where... Wait, maybe that... Oh, shoot. Maybe that was the right one. Aha. Here we go. Okay. Where is Pluto right now? Pluto is... Ah, yes. Pluto is in Sagittarius. <laughs> okay. So... Oh, I wrote it right there. Okay, anyway. So we start with a semi-sextile with Pluto. Pluto is right now in retrograde in Sagittarius, okay? What is Sagittarius? Sagittarius is the sign of, yes, communication, but also a sign of uh, uh, philosophy and expansion, okay? Uh, and so Pluto is the ruler, I'm sorry, not Pluto, Sagittarius is the ruler of the ninth house where we have travel, expansion, philosophy, teaching, and communicating also like that, right? Okay. So Pluto is currently in retrograde in, in Sagittarius, and we have a semi-sextile between Mercury and Pluto at the beginning of this Mercury retrograde period. Now, what is a semi-sextile? A semi-sextile is a less impactful version of a sextile. What is a sextile? A sextile is a beneficial energy, although it's a minor energy compared to the other aspects like a conjunction or an opposition or a trine. Not, not, I'm sorry, not a trine, but a square. So when reading astrology, the, the top, the, you know, the, the, um, the levels of influence with, with aspects goes, you want to look at the conjunctions first, then the uh, oppositions, then the squares. Okay, this is a level of importance. And then from the square, you move to the trine and then finally the sextile. Now, the sextile is similar to a trine in that both a trine and a sextile are beneficial energies. However, with a sextile, it's like you can see that as potential. Now, sextile does have the word sex in it. So to me, that represents creative potential, right? But the thing about a sextile is this is like an open door of opportunity or potential, but you have to choose to walk through that door in order to take advantage of those energies, right? The, a sextile could be there in your chart, in your natal chart for the duration of your life, and you could never work with it just because you choose not to, okay? So it's beneficial, but you have to take that, make that choice to take that step to walk through that open door of opportunity. We have a semi-sextile between Pluto, which is in retrograde, and Mercury, also in retrograde. So yes, this is potentially beneficial, but because it's a semi-sextile, it's less of an opportune, oppor uh, uh, less of a beneficial opportunity than a full sextile. So instead of the door being wide open for you to, to go through a change, yes, Orion. Anyway, instead of the door being wide open for you, this to me seems like with a semi-sextile, the door is kind of like cracked open. Like there's a little, little, a little bit, you know, of an open door here and there's some light coming through and all of a sudden it kind of just catches your attention. Like, whoa, where did that light come from? Whoa, what's this open door? Now, this is an invitation for you to take advantage of these opportunities. And with Pluto here, this semi-sextile between Mercury and Pluto, what is Pluto? Well, Pluto is the furthest most out planet out in our solar system, I believe. But Pluto is representative of death and rebirth. Pluto is the god of the underworld, okay? Uh, and so Pluto in astrology represents death and rebirth, uh, but also, it's, which in turn represents ex like pretty extreme transformation in some cases, uh, and also destruction, but destruction with the, pro with the ability to build more, because again, Pluto represents not only death, but also rebirth, okay? And, be and Pluto being one of the furthest most planets in our solar system, this speaks to 
the deepest, deepest most aspects of ourselves. And this is also because it's a deep aspect. It's also where we, it's also uh, indicative of a community uh, of the community of like the collective energies. So this can either either this is manifesting in your life on a personal level, or you'll sh you should be able to see this manifest in the people around you, the community around you. Okay, um, you might want to pay close attention to uh, to to uh, recent public uh, events in this time period just to see how this energy is resonating on the collective level. But with this semi sextile between Pluto and Mercury. This is like the door being all of a sudden just being pushed open a little bit. You hear a little and the door is a little bit open. And on the other side of that door is Pluto standing there beckoning you, however ominously this may feel, beckoning you towards walking through the door, coming to see what's behind door number one. Yeah. That might seem a little scary and a little ominous, okay? And as you, so so there is an invitation here for you to really get down to the deepest aspects of yourself. It's as if this time period is asking you or at least giving you the opportunity to question what it is that you have known about yourself with Pluto being in Sagittarius. Okay, the philosophy or the conscious understanding that you've come through as you've moved through your life at this time. Now is the time to change it if you feel so inclined. So you can either be courageous or be brave and walk through that door doorway of opportunity, or you can choose not to. It's up to you, right? We all have free will. No hate, no shame, no judgment here, okay? Now, by June 9th, Mercury forms a trine with Big Papa Saturn. So we have this, the, 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 the retrograde started uh, late on the 28th of May. And at that period, Mercury was had this semi-sextile with Pluto. So this doorway of opportunity has opened for you at that time. And that doorway is going to remain open or that semi-sextile is going to remain in effect until the 9th of June, where now Mercury comes out of that that sextile, that semi-sextile with Pluto and now forms a trine with Saturn, which is also in retrograde, moving through Capricorn, okay? that course correction energy. So the doorway is potentially open for you at this time, right? And if you choose to walk through it, you walk through that door and everything might seem really cool all at, in the beginning. Like, okay, no, I'm familiar with this. I know what's going on here. This is, this is nothing new. Like, why am I here? And then all of a sudden things turn pretty dark potentially, or things start to, you start to recognize how things are going wrong, how you may have gone off course, how things may have not have turned out the way you had expected them to. And that might seem scary. Okay. There might be a moment where you're kind of freaking out because it seems like the wheels are falling off. The doors are coming off the hinges. The roof is being blown off by this massive storm that you're experiencing. Okay, in your personal life, but that's just the moment where you start to uncover the truth about what is really going on underneath the surface in terms of your life and the unconscious or maybe the subconscious processes that are going on underneath the surface for you. Okay, and that's probably going to be a little bit scary. Because you're going to be like, well, what the fuck do I do? Oh my God, I never expected this. I never asked for this. I never wanted this. How did things go so wrong? How did we get so get so off track? Hold on now. Because then on the 9th of June, this trine between Mercury and Saturn happens. Okay? So Big Papa Saturn is coming to your defense here or is coming to your aid. Now, like I said when talking about the sextiles and the semi-sextile, a... Trine is a very beneficial energy for us. A trines, trines represent harmony, support, upliftment. It's when the two energies of these planets are actually working together or have the opportunity to really work together. Now, a trine in your natal chart can represent, uh, well, represents things that come easily or natural to you. So trines can uh, are a blessing yes they are a gift but you again you have to choose to consciously work with them and you have to choose to um uh consciously use them for and set the intention to work to use them to your own benefit and even the benefit of the people around you because otherwise this is an energy that comes easily or naturally to you so if you don't consciously work with it if you don't keep flexing that muscle 
eventually it's going to lead to weakness or maybe some sort of atrophy, right? But we're talking about this transit right here. So instead, for us collectively, this trine, which is represented by a triangle, right, which is three points, supportive. Think of three in the Tarot. The three of pentacles is teamwork, right? This is teamwork between the, the retrograde energy of Mercury and the retrograde energy of Saturn. So Big Papa Saturn kind of comes in here and says, hold on, my child, don't freak out. We're just showing you what's going on here so that now we can rebuild this. We can put some a, a, a new process into place. We can we can restructure this energy for you so that things are better or you're on a better path or maybe even on the correct path or right path for you moving forward. Course correction. Yes, this is so freaking perfect. Okay, so here you have uh, you have the opportunity to roll up your sleeves and put some practical work behind whatever changes you want to make or whatever insights you have uncovered during the period of sextile with uh, Mercury and Pluto. Okay, we're now talking about the trine between Saturn and Mercury. I hope you're following here. Okay, um, this trine persists until the uh, until about the third of July, which is a good portion of the post shadow period of uh, Mercury. So Mercury is stationing direct on the twenty third, the twenty third of June. This trine between Mercury and Saturn continues until about, what was it? The 3rd of July. So we have about like maybe a two week period of like the post retrograde shadow of Mercury. But in that post retrograde shadow, you still have the beneficial energies of the trine between Mercury and Saturn, okay? Now, this leads us, eventually this leads us to the next full moon on June 24th, which will be in Sagittarius, where we will be able to expand on what we've been working through during the Mercury retrograde, okay? And then, and um, so we're going to get into the, the, the next full moon, which actually is going to be in Ophiuchus, which is a healing sign. Are you guys recognizing the, pro the progression of time from this We'll just start with the, the last full moon we had, which was uh, in Scorpio, through this energies of the Mercury retrograde, and now to the next full moon, the day after Mercury stations direct, uh, in Ophiuchus. Ophiuchus is the sign of the healer, okay? So everything that's coming up for us, everything that's happening for us right now, we have great potential to take advantage of these energies and really do some serious healing work. And a full moon is the most opportune time to work with the energies of the moon. Why? Because the moon is the fullest. That means the energies of the moon are the most potent. I really hope you guys are following me here. All right. So um, last thing that I want to mention before we get into the cards that are already coming, starting to come out. So let me just, let me just jot this down. Okay. So last thing I want to say before we move into the cards is uh, Saturn stations direct on the 10th of October. That's a 1010 right there. And you know what's so funny? I have been seeing 1010 a lot um, in my in my uh, number synchronicities lately. So that's really kind of awesome. All right. Again, I like I said, you guys, this is going to be a long video, but um, let's see. Okay. Oh, wait, there's something else I wanted to say. There was something else that I wanted to say. Sagittarius, Jupiter. Jupiter is in Aquarius right now. Why did I want to say that though? What was, what about this? Sagittarius, ah, ah, Pluto is in Sagittarius right now. Right. Pluto is retrograde in Sagittarius right now. Uh, Jupiter is the ruler of Sagittarius. Jupiter is currently in Aquarius. Aquarius is yet another fixed sign, but Aquarius is the sign of individuality, uniqueness, disruption, um, and, and, uh, and technology and stuff like that. Jupiter is a benevolent planet. It's a planet of expansion. So with Jupiter being in Aquarius right now, we have, and especially in this con in, in conjunction with the 
the the full moon that we just had that I labeled or I titled the eclipse of self with Jupiter being in Aquarius right now we have the ability to really expand on the truth of who we truly are. Saturn moving retrograde through Capricorn gives us the opportunity to break through, to break through all of the barriers, all the chains that block us, all of the ties and the mental prisons that keep us from being a true authentic version of ourselves. It helps us to break through the masks and the conditioning put onto us by society. With Jupiter in Aquarius, this is giving us a strong opportunity to really all of this combined is giving us a strong opportunity to break free from the patterns, from the conditioning, from the struggles and the strife, and to expand more on who we truly are as individuals. Yes? So let's look at the first few cards that have come out here. I'm using, I'm starting with the Moonology deck here. Okay. So first three cards that have come out. First of all, the energy is gaining momentum. Second, you have... It's time to release negativity, okay? You can, be, you can see that as, ah, oh, look at that. Full moon in Scorpio, right? Aha, okay. And then we have full moon in Aquarius. So Scorpio energy, Aquarius energy. Show the world the real you, yes? With what do you need to release at the bottom of the deck. You guys, you can't make this shit up. And this is really quite uh, self-explanatory. Mercury in retrograde through Taurus, like I said, is giving us the opportunity to really put on our thinking caps, we'll say, to put on our, our spectacles and really take a, a, a scientific, very conscious, uh, maybe even philosophical look at what we have growing in our garden and what needs to be removed, what needs to be released, how we can how we can uproot that which no longer serves us and till the soil to prepare for what we're going to be planting next. All right. So this is all this is giving us a time period to understand what negativity and the negativity that I'm picking up on here is very Capricorn energy. Capricorn is represented as the devil in the tarot. Capricorn energy is not intrinsically bad. But what it feels like here for a lot of us is um, a lot of the old relationships, a lot of the old identification, um, a lot of the old status quo that we held in our lives now has the opportunity to be released. So not all of this is bad. Not all of it needs to be released, but you have the opportunity to look at what really is not serving you here. And that's what we're, that's what I'm going to say is the negative in this situation. What no longer serves the true authentic expression of your soul? What have you outgrown? Right? You could have, you really could have outgrown some things, but because of this, this, uh, you know, this status quo type energy, you may have just stuck with it thinking that it was the right path for you when it really no longer serves you. So what negativity do you, re I'm sorry. Oh yeah, it's time to release negativity. What do you need to release? That's what this Mercury in retrograde is providing you with, the opportunity to understand what needs to be released so that you can, in fact, show the world the real you, okay? Now, understand that the energy is gaining momentum. So we're starting with with the, the, the semi-sextile between Mercury and Pluto, and then on the 9th of June, we hit that trine between Mercury and Saturn, where now the energies are ripe for you to start really tilling the soil and doing some practical work, putting some practical work behind all of this discovery for yourself, okay? Let's continue. Um, I want to get some energies from the Sacred Destiny deck. I just want to get some keywords here. Five shuffles, that was one. This is two. This is three. This is four. And this is five. So, spirit, some key words for the collective here in terms of this Mercury retrograde period. This, in terms of this transformation, we have the potential to realize. 
always keep in mind, you guys, that this is all free will, okay? You don't have to change anything if you don't want to. If you find yourself really digging your heels in and saying, and really... And now here's, okay, so here's the other side of this Mercury in retrograde through Taurus. You could either take this opportunity to really, we'll say, till the soil, or you could be in, in, in an energy of really digging your heels in and not making any sort of changes, refusing to change. That's a very Taurus energy, all right? It's up to you. The, the, the choice of free will is yours. Now, I will say, with Saturn being in retrograde right now, there are sh heavily, strongly influencing energies to make some sort of change. But again, you have the ability to resist that if you want. Now, some keywords here, please, Spirit, in terms of Mercury being in retrograde for the collective for this time period. That's enough right there. Oh, shit, you guys. I, sh <laughs> I love it when this shit happens. At the bottom of the deck, you have opportunity. Underneath opportunity is truth. And underneath truth is openness, okay? So you have the opportunity to really break yourself open. It's not going to be easy, and it's probably going to be fairly painful, all right? Any sort of disruption of physical matter is either going to take a hell of a lot of effort, like the earth, digging up the earth. That ain't no easy feat. I mean, sure, it's a little easier after it's just rained, but it's not always easy, <laughs> right? Changing anything of yourself, remodeling anything physical is going to take time and effort. And when it comes to your physical body or your physical self, there's probably going to be a little bit of pain. Okay? I mean, think about it. If you're going through surgery, you have to cut the body open. And that's, that's fucking painful, right? Oh, okay. So you have the opportunity to break yourself open, to see more of the greater truth in your life. And you have an opportunity... For happiness okay but in order to reach that happiness you guys you're going to have to go through some sort of change now this happiness specifically I'm picking up on this happiness has to do with your inner self with your true values keep in mind Taurus is the ruler of the second house the house of values also the house of money so for some of you this is changing what changing your perspective or changing your view on what it is you value. This also could be a course correction correction in your career. Think about it this way. For me, this is absolutely being reflected right now because I'm moving from a shift of just being a straight up tarot and energy reader to being an astrologer. And this also coincides with that morning coffee reading that I did a few weeks ago in which we said it's taking shape. <laughs> but anyway, the only way you're going to be able to reach this happiness, this truer sense of happiness, this truer sense of authenticity, the only way you're going to be able to do that is if you go through some sort of change. But recognize, you guys, that change came out in reverse. And this is exactly what I was just talking about. You have the opportunity to go through this change should you choose to accept it. And some of you are looking at this situation right now like... I don't know about this, man. I really don't know. This is some deep, dark, and heavy shit, man. And look, Taurus is not the type of energy to really be going down into the deeps naturally, the depths naturally. Think about it this way. The exact opposite of Taurus is one of the deepest signs in the Zodiac, Scorpio. <laughs> so, and Taurus, when you think about it, Taurus deals with, the physical earth, right, is the sign of the physical earth. But, I mean, Taurus doesn't really go that deep into the earth unless we're talking like a deep-rooted plant, like a tree or something like that. That's about as deep as Taurus is going to go. Taurus really is more topical, okay? It's more surface-oriented, right? Its exact opposite is Scorpio, which is one of the deepest, right? Probably, arguably, the deepest sign. Okay, so there is a natural resistance in Taurus to really going deep into things. But again, these energies are supportive of you going deep and tilling the soil and breaking up and uprooting what needs to be left behind. Okay, but you're going to have to choose 
to go through this change, you guys. No ifs, ands, or buts about it, okay? If you really want to reach this sense of happiness. Let's get into the tarot here. I have the vice versa deck that I'm going to use for this section. One. And again, we're continuing to talk about the general energies. And right after this, we're going to get into some love messages. Yes, this is two. This is three. Hi, Jinxie. What's up, baby girl? This is four. Oh, really? Oh. Well, I'm working right now, baby girl. I'll give you some food when I'm done. This is five. All right, kids. So, Mercury in retrograde, May 28th through June 23rd. What's going on, Spirit? What do you want to say for us? Uh, key points, highlights please, of this energy. You can't make this shit up, you guys. You really cannot make this shit up. So remember when I was talking about... <laughs> you really can't make this shit up, y'all. Remember when I was talking... Fucking right. Remember when I was talking about the, the trine between Saturn and Mercury? The trine is represented by a triangle, right? A triangle has three points. North, West and East, we'll say. But the but the tri a triangle also represents the number three, and the th and three, the number three provides some sort of stability in your structure. Obviously, the ultimate form or a stronger form of stability is the number four. But three, when you come together with a number three, three is uh, representative of Gemini. Uh, which is the third the third uh, 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 sign in the zodiac, the third house, which is ruled by uh, Mercury. Um, you know, three is a number of communication, is a number of science, is a number of learning, is a number of building, right? And remember what I said about the trine here. Think about the three in the tarot, the three of pentacles, teamwork, self-mastery. There you go. There's that trine right there. The Three of Pentacles, building on yourself. Now, this this time period, even, even though we're talking about this on a personal level, this time period could also be a very strong time period of communities coming together to reshape, or at least to start to uncover ways that, that the community can be reshaped and healed and grown and rebuilt, okay? Three of Pentacles. Three of Pentacles, two, uh, I'm sorry, Page of Pentacles, Two of Pentacles, and the fool, all right? This is a very, very physical time period for you right now. Why? Look at all these pentacles, okay? But also, keep in mind, this Mercury in retrograde is happening in very physical Taurus, right? Okay, perfect. So, we're in a process of bringing balance, bringing understanding of how balance can be set into our lives, and reshaping and rebuilding ourselves which is leading us towards taking a leap of faith into a brand new reality, Page of Pentacles. To me, the Page of Pentacles represents that energy of leveling up in this situation. So you're coming out of the past, overall energy of the tower, the past in terms of situations that no longer serve you, Four of Cups is on the other side of the deck. Okay, you have the opportunity to uncover what needs to be torn down to then, okay, to in order in, in, in an effort to bring balance, greater balance into your life to then rebuild and ultimately start on a brand new path or just a different direction. One that serves you on a much greater scale. I want to close out this section of the reading with some oracle guidance from the Gaia Oracle, and then we'll get into the love messages for this time period. So, closing message. Three shuffles here. Definitely three shuffles. That was one. This is two. And 
and this is three. Okay, closing oracle guidance for this section of the reading, please, Spirit. You have card number 17, achievement. Keep focused on your dream. Please, <laughs> please excuse the manicure, you guys. <laughs> okay, here we go. Card number 17. You will soon achieve a goal you had set for yourself. Your hard work and persistence is about to pay off, especially if you're really working. If you take Saturn by the hand at this moment and really allow, well, Saturn and Pluto to guide you on this fearlessly. I mean, obviously there are some things that might, you know, bring fear up in you, but if you really handle it face on and allow the universe to really guide you here, great achievement is, is, uh, uh, can be acquired, right? Okay. Know that you deserve all the success that is coming your way. Quietly acknowledge this to yourself as you celebrate your achievements. Thank the earth and universe for this blessing in the knowledge that all you do is a co-creation with the higher powers that be. Then refocus your attention back to the task at hand. Do not lose sight of your original purpose and intention. This is only the beginning. Much more can be accomplished provided you keep focusing, focused on your dream. Remember what is truly important to you. It may be helpful to set a new goal. This could be bigger and more fulfilling than you had ever imagined. There's an affirmation here that I'd like to read. And you can follow along if you like. I give thanks for all the successes coming my way. I'm sorry, I said, let's say that again. I give thanks for all the success, there we go, for all the success coming my way. All I do is a co-creation with my higher self and the universal light of love. I keep focused on my dream. What I imagine, I create. I am grateful for what I have achieved. You guys. Woo! Okay, moving forward. Okay, so. Last thing I want to do in this session here is I want to get some collective love messages in terms of these energies. So for that, I am going to use the love oracle cards here. Yes? Oh, really, Orion? Is that so? Look, that just sounds like a bunch of crazy talk, baby boy. I don't know what you I don't know what your problem is, but I think you's crazy. Yeah, that's right, Orion. All right, kids. I'm going to give this five shuffles. Let's see what love messages we have for this Mercury in retrograde. Yes. This is 2. This is 3. This is four. And this is five. Okay, Spirit. What love messages do we have for the collective in terms of this period of Mercury being in retrograde? What love messages do we have for the collective in terms of these energies? Okay, so on a love front, on the love front, woo, wow. Okay, so on the love front here, you guys, we have, oh my gosh, we have a, a unique, a very strong opportunity 
to change our habits when it comes to love, to change our alignment when it comes to love, to change the path that you walk in terms of love and relationships, okay? What we have come out here is stabbed in the back, which is symbolizing past energies, but then you have that with heart with a key. So you are being presented expressly with an opportunity to unlock whatever has you, the devil, whatever has you chained to certain types of people, certain types of relationships, and or maybe even certain relationship patterns. You have an express opportunity to, at the bottom of the deck, overall energy, you have the express opportunity to make healthier choices. This is the theme for you in terms of love moving through this Mercury in retrograde. Again, Mercury is the planet of science, communication, learning, okay? So you really have the opportunity to study, really, really, really get down to the fine details of what has been plaguing you in terms of love and relationships. Let's get a little bit more here, please, Spirit. Okay. Big Papa Saturn is coming through. Take this one. Big Papa Saturn is really, oh shit, is really coming through for you and saying no dating. This is not a time for dating. If you're going to be dating anyone, this is a time to date yourself. This is a time to date yourself. Because quite frankly, right now, my dear, for whomever this message is for, you are heartbroken. And have been heartbroken. But it's time to put that to rest. The coffin. It's time for you. It's time for you to balance the yin and yang within yourself. Bottom of the deck, twin flames. Now, we're getting into a twin flame message here. Uh, this doesn't have to, you don't have to resonate with the twin flame energy to resonate with this message. Um, if you don't resonate with the twin flame energy, that's fine. The message for you here in terms of this is instead of going out there and dating and trying to find a counterpart externally to you, this is a time for your period for you to really work on finding the counterpart within yourself. So breaking yourself free of um, the habits and the patterns that keep you from being from, that keep you from aligning with the true love and care and balance and harmonious relationship you truly seek, okay? This is a time for you to become your own best friend, to become your own twin flame, to become your own counterpart, to become your own soulmate, all right? So like I said, if you're going to be dating anyone, you should be dating yourself. This date in reverse can be very much like a retrograde planet taking this energy internally instead of projecting it or focusing it externally okay now for those of you that do resonate with the twin flame journey okay there is a specific message here for you there is a snake in the grass underneath twin flames at the bottom of the deck is snake and sunglasses and whoop, look at that separation okay you are in separation right now with a twin flame for whomever this message is for. Not everybody, obviously, but for whomever this message is for, you're in separation with a twin flame right now because there is a snake in the grass. Someone has not been honest, truthful, forthcoming, or forthright, okay? But this separation is allowing you to ascend, to see a bigger picture to expand beyond this twin flame situation because it has highlighted how you are heartbroken, how you need to shift, how you need to change, how you need to find this balance of yin and yang within yourself. That, in my opinion, is the true reason for the twin flame journey. Regardless as to whether or not you actually end up with that person or not, this is more of a personal path than a external path. This is the twin flame dynamic helps to trigger you and show you where your deepest wounds are and where you need to heal, where you are heartbroken and where you can put an end to that 
the coffin and create new beginnings, okay? So use this Mercury in retrograde period with all of the things that we talked about in the beginning of the reading. And if you haven't seen the beginning, if you just skipped to the, to the love message at this point, you're really going to need to go back and listen to the rest of the reading because, and the rest of the energies for this situation, because this is a perfect opportunity. I mean, like such a perfect opportunity for you to get down to the deepest depths of your love and relationship situation and why you are so heartbroken and what needs to change in order for you to heal that broken heart okay let's get into some tarot for this five shuffles here one two four and I'm using the Los Carabello deck here this is five hmm. all right so closing message from the tarot in terms of love for this Mercury in retrograde period, please, Spirit. That's enough. For, wow, you guys. Oh. You guys. Overall energy is the ace of fucking cups, bro. Yo. Loving yourself. Working on filling up your cup. Specifically, uncovering or digging out what has been in your cup that has been keeping you from receiving this flow of unconditional love. The, like, literally, I don't know how else to explain this. I'm sure maybe some of you will be able to come, out, come up with a better analogy or a better reason as to why this may, ha may have happened. But I'm literally seeing either a cup that has been buried underground for ages, I'm hearing for some of you for centuries, or a cup that somehow has been filled up with a bunch of earth or a bunch of dirt or a bunch of soot or just a bunch of shit, trinkets, uh, things that you don't need, keepsakes, memories, this, that, just, but filled up your cup so that you can't receive the flow of unconditional love coming from your higher self, coming from the, the universe, coming from God, source, creator. This is all about doing the inner work underneath the page at the Ace of Cups is the hermit. Doing the inner work to clean up your cup so that it can runneth over, which ultimately will bring you victory because of the awareness of your emotional reality. Queen of Cups, Ace of Swords, Six of Wands, the Hermit, the Ace of Cups. But you're gonna have to be strong. You're gonna have to be strong. Strength, you're gonna have to face the beast within. You're gonna have to face the shadow within. You're gonna have to face all of the hidden aspects of your love life that you have been so desperately running from. You are going to have to face them and do the work to release yourself from the devil. Look at that shit, y'all. You can't make this shit up. There's that devil energy. There's that but there's that Saturn in retrograde through Capricorn breaking you free or giving you the opportunity to break free from this devil energy, from this attachment, from this codependency, from, oh, just wait, oh, just wait, from the mental prison, eight of swords, from the tomfoolery, the deception, the lying, the cheating, seven of swords, Break yourself free from the denial, two of swords. Oh, look at all those swords, you guys. Look, 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 look at that. Look at all those swords. The eight of swords, the seven of swords, and the two of swords. This is providing you with the opportunity to stop being in denial. To open your eyes and see the deception and the confinement you have been in for so long that has only led to help to lead you towards this reality of a broken heart. You have two more cards here that have fallen face down. What it is you are doing in this situation 
is you are reconnecting with your sense of emotional reality and emotional freedom with the Page of Cups. Also potentially connecting with your inner child and bringing yourself a greater level of internal stability for wands. But also there's that twin flame energy again, the 11-11 the of the four of wands. So if you're on a twin flame journey right now, this Mercury in retrograde is all about you dating yourself and learning to be your own damn twin flame, your own counterpart, your own, your own psychic is what I just heard. So for those, so for some of you, you're on the masculine side of the situation and you're needing to integrate more of your feminine side, which will bring psychic ability. For the, for the feminines out there, you are needing to integrate with more of your masculine side. Finding that harmonization of the masculine and the feminine within yourself instead of focusing on the external. And if you don't resonate with the twin flame journey, it's the same thing. Finding a way to balance, harmonize, and integrate your internal masculine energies with your internal feminine energies. Regardless as to whether you're on a twin flame journey or not, everybody's got the masculine and the feminine within. Just like opinions are like assholes, everybody's got one. Well, everybody's got masculine and feminine energy within, okay? We all have the ability to find that internal balance that is right for us of these two energies. And keep in mind, guys, even though you're working on finding a balance, and even once you do strike that balance, there's still going to be a little bit of uh, affinity for one side over the other. Like me, I started out strongly on the feminine side of the equation, but as I've been going through my own twin flame journey, I've been able to balance and integrate and bring more of my masculine side in, but I'm still dominantly feminine, right? And whoever I partner up with eventually down the line when the time comes is most likely gonna be more on the masculine side, right? Cute. All right, kids. Let's close this out uh, with Oracle guidance from the Lover's Oracle. I told y'all this was going to be a long video, but I'm loving this. I'm like so, I'm so activated right now. This is like, I love it. All right, here we go, guys. Closing Oracle message in terms of love for this Mercury in retrograde period from the 28th of May to the 23rd of June, 2021. Yeah, closing Oracle love messages, please spirit for the collective. That's enough right there. Oh my God, perfect. I'm gonna leave it right here. We don't need any more than this. Be aware of what you are projecting. For the qualities you admire in one another are qualities you both possess. Equally so, the qualities you don't like are also your own reflection. So there you have it, guys. I'm going to leave it there. Thank you all so very much for tuning in. I hope this was helpful for you. Please don't hesitate to let me know how you felt about this and what your th thoughts are and how you're experiencing this personally down in the comments section below. If you are new to my channel, thank you so much for tuning in. Please make sure to subscribe for more because there is definitely going to be more of this type of content moving forward. Also, make sure to smash that like button for me, yeah? But with that said, I hope you guys have a fantastic day and I look forward to connecting with you again for our maybe our next cup of coffee or maybe just our next reading tomorrow morning or near off in the future, yeah? Take care. Mwah! Bye! <laughs>